Isaiah Dunn is My Hero by Kelly J. Baptiste. Isaiah Dunn isn't getting any breaks these days. He's living with his sister and mom at the Smoky Inn. Well, that's not its real name, but that's what Isaiah calls it on account of all the cigarette smoke that make his clothes stink. And then there's Angel Atkins at school, who keeps calling him Isaiah Dumb. But their teacher, Mrs. Fisher, never seems to hear. It's always Isaiah's fault. Isaiah's a poet. At least, he used to be, before his dad died. Now, the words just won't seem to come. And to make matters worse, Mrs. Fisher has paired Isaiah with Angel to work on a group project. At least Isaiah has his best friend, Sneaky. The two of them are in the candy selling business. Sneaky, nicknamed Sneaky for his love of new sneakers, wants a new pair. And Isaiah, well, he has a different wish. He wants to help his mom and sister get out of living in the motel and back into their apartment. But Isaiah just can't seem to catch a break. Can he get this school project done without getting in trouble? Can he help his family now that his dad has died? Or is it all just too much for one kid on his own? Find out when you read Isaiah Dunn is My Hero. Hello, my name is Anne Claire Lazard. My first book with Scholastic is Show Me a Son, 11-year-old Mary Lambert lives with her family in a small farming town on Martha's Vineyard. Mary is deaf, but that isn't considered unusual. She lives in a unique community where many people are born deaf. Her family has recently suffered a sudden tragic loss. It's not until an outsider, a scientist, comes to town that Mary begins to understand how unusual her community is compared with the rest of America. She is stolen from her island and must find her way back home. I want deaf kids to see, to recognize themselves in the book. And I want hearing kids to see the world from a perspective they may never have thought of before. I was told to get lost, so I did. I'd never go back there. Whatever the future held, fine. I could take care of myself. Then I met them, Maria Dolores and Alegria, who became like my sisters. Together, we made our way to El Otro Lado. No roads, no maps, just a lot of sun and some water. A little water, no water. Still, I promised to take care of them. They needed me, and maybe I needed them too. They were the only family I had, until they too were taken away forever, leaving me here, trapped in this prison. But no matter how bad it is here, I'm never going back, never trusting anyone again. I can take care of myself. Chapter 1, The Story of the World's First Races. Before we begin, let's get something straight. This is not a history book. I repeat, this is not a history book. At least, not the kind of history book that most of us are used to. The ones that kind of read sort of slow and drag out and can kind of become a bit boring. This is a book that puts you in conversation with history to help us better understand the present. If all history books were written this way, a lot of us would know a lot more about history. It's written in your language, with you in mind. Uh, because it's you who's going to use this to change the world. Hachette. There are two things I love most in this world. The first one is playing war games. The second thing is my great-grandfather, Gigi. He was an actual war hero in World War II. He basically saved this entire village in France, and they still remember. They want Gigi to come back so they can thank him for all the heroic things he did. And the best part? 
He's taking me with him. I can't wait to see where all the action went down. I'm Rob Harrell, and I'm the author of Wink. Wink is a middle school book that's about a lot of things. It's about personal relationships, friendships, surviving middle school, humiliation at times. It's also about a kid with cancer. Uh, but as scary as that sounds, and as heavy as that may sound, I wanted it to be a book that shows there can be humor in all these situations, and that humor sometimes is the way we lead ourselves through the dark times. And uh, Ross, the main character, uh, definitely has a good sense of humor. You get inside his head and you hear his thoughts and he's really good at finding the absurdity in some of these situations. And uh, that's, you know, the way he and his best friend Abby, that's the way they navigate the world is through their sense of humor. This book means so much to me and I'm just incredibly excited to share it with all of you. This is One Minute Books, and I'm reviewing Zora and Me, The Cursed Ground by T.R. Simon. This book um, takes place in the early 1900s and in the mid-1800s. Um, the young girl, um, Zora, young girl Zora and Carrie in the 1900s, something happens there, and they're going to try to solve this mystery that is going to be linked to something that happened back in the 1850s with a slave called Lucia. Uh, this book was really cool. I love the way it goes back and forth between the two um, time periods. I found myself getting really wrapped up in both of them and not wanting the, those parts to end. Um, the mystery between the two is something that you're going to have to read to figure out because the um, murder that takes place in the um, 1850s is going to be tied into what's happening in the 1900s, Zora and Carrie. Uh, if you like books that have mystery in them, that are going to have a murder in them, um, that deal with uh, historical fiction and slavery, you'll like this one. Give it a try. For information on it, check out my description below. Books, I'm reviewing Homerooms and Hall Passes by Tom O'Donnell. This book is about a group of friends that live in a place called uh, Brandalorian, and one of them's a wizard, one of them's a barbarian, one of them's a gloom elf assassin, one of them's a pan paladin, and the last one's a thief. And they go on quests together where they will gather treasure and bring it back. And when they're not doing that, they like to play a game. And the game they play is Homes and Hall Passes, which is where they pretend they're in a middle school. Now, they're playing this game one day when the wizard, Albiorix, accident accidentally casts a spell. And they all are sent to the middle school. And now they've got to be in a middle school. And they have no clue what to do about that once they get there. This book is so much fun, okay? I would say it's kind of magic realism because there's a magic piece of them being these characters. But then when they get to middle school, all the stuff they have to deal with, they have no idea about homerooms or how to get a pass to go to the bathroom or what a cafeteria is like or what detention is like. They've got to figure out all that stuff and deal with it for real. I really like the relationship between their friends and how, you know, things that happen in middle school kind of impact their friendship. If you like books that are going to have humor in them, going to have action in them, and they're going to deal with stuff that really happens in middle school, you're going to love this one. Give it a try. For more information on it, check out my description below. The City Spies. Five kids from around the globe. A hacker, a magician, a code breaker, a rebel, and a genius operating out of a secret location in the north of Scotland. They are the biggest secret in British secret intelligence. And now, as young people from around the world head to Paris, it's up to the five of them to stop a dangerous villain and save the day. City Spies, a brand new series from award-winning author James Ponty. I just found out that my grandmother was a space cop. Her mission was to protect the galaxy. She passed away and left her power ring to me. Now it's my job to fight evil and injustice. The only limits are my imagination and will. Can I live up to her legacy? There's only one way to find out. You were my power ring, Lantern. Fight! Mona Star is sweet and nerdy and a creative and very talented artist, but she is followed around by this dark shadow that tells her constantly that she's never good enough 
and that people don't like her. She is followed constantly by a physical manifestation of her depression, which she calls the matter. When her best friend and biggest supporter moves to Hawaii, Mona's dark matter gets darker and louder, and she needs some extra help in combating it. That is when her logical, unemotional scientist parents send Mona to therapy. And Mona's therapist decides to approach her matter also like a scientist. Observe the matter. Take notes. What does the matter say to you? How does it behave? Can you predict the way it behaves? Can you control it? Mona becomes the scientist and the lab rat as she learns to use art, writing, self-care, and friendship to manipulate and change her dark matter into something else. Based on the author's real life experiences with mental illness, Laura Lee Gulledge creates visual depictions of depression that are anthropomorphic and also really emotional. For a graphic novel that will teach you how to tackle the dark places inside your own mind with practical ideas and also lots of supportive love, then check out The Dark Matter of Mona Star by Laura Lee Gulledge. Everything is a puzzle. When I put together the pieces, it feels like I'm flying. I'm in a state-of-the-art rehab facility, but something is off. Patients go missing. Some, my own friends. They're telling us they just graduate or move on to other treatment centers. I'll tell them I'm Barbara Gordon, and I'm a hacker who will follow the clues till I find out what really happened. When all the pieces fit, I'll fly again.